Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. At 22, life for me, Sam, was a routine cycle of waking up, going to work at the office, and returning home. The office was a place of dull gray cubicles, monotonous tasks, and the same faces day after day. My life changed one lazy Friday afternoon when a joke among colleagues spiraled into a challenge I never expected. It started with casual office banter. We were discussing the upcoming high-profile company event, a yearly gala, where everyone tried to outdo each other in elegance and style. Amidst the chatter, Jake, a colleague known for his playful mischief, turned to me with a sly grin. Hey, Sam, I bet you wouldn't dare to show up at the gala in a full-blown woman's attire. Imagine the looks on everyone's faces, he chuckled. The room erupted in laughter. I forced a smile, trying to brush off the comment. But then Sarah, the coworker I had secretly admired for months, chimed in. I'll take that bet, she said, her eyes glinting with a mix of humor and challenge. If Sam shows up as a woman and fools everyone, I'll go on a date with him. The room went silent for a moment then filled with excited murmurs. My heart pounded at the thought of a date with Sarah. Despite the absurdity of the situation, I found myself nodding in agreement. All right, you're on, I said, trying to sound confident. Over the next few days, the reality of the bet began to sink in. I had to transform into a woman for an evening, something I had never imagined doing. My first stop was a local salon where I sheepishly explained my situation. The stylist, a friendly woman named Lisa, raised an eyebrow but didn't judge. We'll start with hair extensions, she said, examining my short brown hair. You'll need length and volume to pull off a feminine look. Sitting in the stylist's chair, I watched in amazement as she skillfully attached long golden blonde extensions to my hair, transforming my appearance. The sensation of long hair brushing against my shoulders was new and peculiar. Next came the makeup lesson. Lisa introduced me to the world of foundations, eyeshadows, and lipsticks. She showed me how to apply mascara to enhance my eyes and a soft pink lipstick to bring out the fullness of my lips. The face staring back at me from the mirror was unfamiliar but intriguing. Now, let's talk about your outfit, Lisa said. For a company event, you'll need something elegant, but not too flashy. We ventured into a boutique where I was overwhelmed by the array of dresses, skirts, and blouses. Lisa picked out a few options, and I reluctantly tried them on. The first was a deep red dress that hugged my body awkwardly. The second was a little better, a black dress with a modest neckline and a flowing skirt. But it was the third dress that caught my eye a sleek navy blue number that somehow complemented my makeshift figure. Undergarments were another challenge. Lisa explained the importance of the right bra and how it could change the look of a dress. She helped me select a padded bra and a pair of matching underwear. The sensation of the fabric against my skin was strange, but not entirely unpleasant. Shoes were the final hurdle. I teetered awkwardly in a pair of black heels, struggling to maintain my balance. Lisa assured me it would get easier with practice. Remember, the key is confidence, she advised. Walk with purpose, and no one will second-guess you. As I left the salon, tottering slightly in my new heels, I couldn't help but feel a mix of nervousness and excitement. The thought of going to the company event as Samantha was daunting but the prospect of a date with Sarah spurred me on. I spent the next few days practicing my walk and refining my makeup skills. The transformation from Sam to Samantha was more than just physical. It was a test of my ability to step into a completely different role. The night before the event, I stood in front of my mirror, fully dressed as Samantha. The sight was surreal. The long hair, the makeup, the dress, and the heels all came together to create a version of me I barely recognized. The day of the company event arrived, and my transformation into Samantha was in full swing. I woke up early, feeling a mix of nerves and excitement. As I got ready, I focused on every detail Lisa had taught me. Applying makeup was still a challenge. I fumbled with the eyeliner trying to get a perfect line. The mascara wand wavered in my unsteady hand, but eventually I managed to coat my lashes without smudging. 
The lipstick was easier, a soft pink shade that added a subtle color to my lips. Dressing up was the next step. I carefully put on the navy blue dress, admiring its fit and the way it shaped my figure. The padded bra and matching panties felt less strange now, almost comfortable. I slipped into the black heels, steadier than before but still cautious with each step. The wig was the final piece of my transformation. I had chosen a long, golden blonde wig that cascaded down my shoulders, a stark contrast to my usual short brown hair. Putting it on, I adjusted it until it sat just right, framing my face and completing my look as Samantha. I took a deep breath, looking at myself in the mirror. The person staring back at me was almost unrecognizable, a testament to the effort and time spent on this makeover. Stepping out of my apartment, I headed to the event. The walk was a challenge in heels, and I was conscious of every step, trying not to stumble. The cool evening air brushed against my exposed skin, a new sensation that made me acutely aware of my attire. As I arrived at the venue, my heart raced. The grand hall was filled with colleagues in suits and elegant dresses. I paused at the entrance, gathering my courage. With a deep breath, I stepped inside, my heels clicking on the marble floor. The reactions were immediate. Some people glanced my way, curious or confused. Others smiled, probably assuming I was a new face at the company. I kept my head high, walking with as much confidence as I could muster, remembering Lisa's advice. I spotted Sarah across the room, looking stunning in a green dress. Our eyes met and she gave me a small, encouraging smile. It bolstered my confidence and I made my way through the crowd, trying to blend in. The night was a whirlwind of interactions. Some colleagues recognized me and were surprised, even impressed by the drastic change. Others didn't realize who I was, treating me as just another guest. I conversed, laughed, and even danced a little, each step and word carefully measured. Throughout the evening, I was acutely aware of the clothes I wore. The dress felt different from anything I'd worn before, its fabric moving against my skin with every motion. The heels altered the way I walked, a constant reminder of the persona I had taken on. But it wasn't just the physical sensations that were new. As Samantha, I experienced a different kind of attention. Some people were overly friendly, others dismissive. Each reaction was a learning moment, a glimpse into a world I had never known. As the night progressed, I found myself enjoying some aspects of this experience. The feel of the dress, the way the hair from the wig brushed against my face, even the challenge of moving in heels had its own thrill. It was like playing a role, and for a brief moment, I forgot about the bet and simply lived in the present. The event was nearing its end when Sarah approached me. She looked at me with a mix of amusement and something else I couldn't quite place. You really did it, Sam, she said, her voice a mix of surprise and respect. I didn't think you'd go through with it. Her words brought me back to reality. This was all a bet, a challenge I had accepted. Yet as I stood there in that dress, with my face made up and hair styled, I couldn't deny that this experience had been more than just a dare. It was a journey into an unknown part of myself, a discovery of a new perspective. As the event came to a close, I realized that this night would be remembered for a long time, not just for the challenge it posed, but for the unexpected insights it offered. Walking back home, the click of my heels on the pavement echoed in the quiet night, a rhythmic reminder of the unusual but enlightening path I had taken. The aftermath of the company event was a mix of emotions and unexpected reactions. As Samantha, I had navigated the evening with a strange blend of unease and curiosity. The bet had been a success, but it left me with a whirlwind of thoughts as I returned to my regular life as Sam. The next day at work, the buzz was all about the mysterious woman who had attended the event. Some of my colleagues were in disbelief when they realized it was me. The reactions varied. Some were amused, others confused, and a few were clearly uncomfortable. I tried to brush it off with humor, but inside I felt a storm of conflicting emotions. The most surprising part of this entire experience was how much I had enjoyed certain aspects of being Samantha. 
the soft feel of the dress, the way the wig changed my appearance, even the challenge of walking in heels. It was like stepping into a different world, one that was unfamiliar yet intriguing. Sarah approached me at the coffee machine, a smile playing on her lips. You really surprised everyone, Sam, and you owe me a date, remember? She teased. I nodded, a bit taken aback. The date had been the goal, but now it felt like an afterthought. Yeah, I remember, I replied, trying to sound casual. As the days passed, I found myself thinking about the event more than I expected. There was something about the transformation into Samantha that stuck with me. It wasn't just the physical appearance, it was the whole experience of seeing the world from a different angle. I decided to explore this newfound interest further. On a whim, I visited the salon again, seeking advice from Lisa. She listened intently as I explained my feelings. Sometimes dressing up can open up new perspectives, she said thoughtfully. Why not explore this a bit more, see where it takes you? Encouraged by her words, I started experimenting with female clothing and makeup in private. I bought a few dresses, different from the formal one I wore to the event, along with basic makeup supplies. Each evening, after work, I would spend some time as Samantha, learning more about this side of myself. It was during these moments that I began to appreciate the nuances of feminine attire. The way a skirt swayed when I walked, the feel of nylon against my legs, the delicate fastenings of a blouse. All these details contributed to a unique experience that was both foreign and fascinating. The date with Sarah was approaching and I found myself at a crossroads. Should I go as Sam or as Samantha? The thought of going as Samantha was both terrifying and exhilarating. After much deliberation, I decided to take the leap. I dressed up, taking extra care with my appearance. The navy blue dress was replaced with a softer pastel green one that complemented my figure differently. I chose a lighter wig, more subtle in its appearance, and did my makeup with a more natural look. Meeting Sarah as Samantha was nerve-wracking. She looked surprised, but recovered quickly, a smile spreading across her face. I didn't expect this, but I'm glad you're exploring yourself, she said, her voice warm and accepting. Mm. The date was unlike any I had experienced. As Samantha, I felt a different kind of attention, a new way of interacting. Sarah was supportive, treating me no differently than she would have if I were Sam. It was a comforting realization, yet it left me with more questions than answers. After the date, I lay in bed reflecting on the evening. The lines between Sam and Samantha were blurring. In the weeks following the bet and my date with Sarah, life took on an unexpected rhythm. The lines between Sam and Samantha began to blur, leaving me in a state of continuous introspection. It wasn't just about the clothes or the makeup anymore. It was a deeper, more complex exploration of my own identity. At work, I maintained my usual routine as Sam, but the whispers and sideways glances continued. Some colleagues seemed amused by my adventure, while others appeared uncomfortable. I tried to ignore their reactions, focusing instead on my work, but it was becoming increasingly difficult to separate my two worlds. The evenings and weekends were my time to explore Samantha's persona, I experimented with different styles of dresses, each with its unique flair and feel. I learned to appreciate the delicate textures of the fabrics, the way each garment fit and moved with my body. The nylon stockings became a favorite, a subtle yet significant addition to the whole ensemble. Makeup also became a form of expression. I discovered the nuances of colors and techniques, how a slight change in lipstick shade or eyeshadow could alter my entire appearance. It was a creative outlet, one that brought both challenges and satisfaction. However, it wasn't just about the physical transformation. As Samantha, I began to experience a range of emotions and thoughts that were unfamiliar. There was a sense of freedom in expressing myself in this new way, but it also brought up questions about my identity and desires. The more time I spent as Samantha, the more I wondered if this was just a phase or something more profound. The culmination of these feelings came unexpectedly. One evening, while dressed as Samantha, I decided to go out for a walk. 
The cool night air felt different against my skin. The streets looked different under the streetlights. I walked with a mix of trepidation and excitement, aware of every glance from passers-by. It was during this walk that I bumped into an old college friend. His initial confusion quickly turned to recognition and then to a barrage of questions. I was caught off guard, struggling to explain my situation. His reaction was a mix of surprise and, unfortunately, some judgment. The encounter left me feeling exposed and vulnerable, a stark reminder of the societal norms I was challenging. The incident shook me. For days afterward, I pondered over my experiences as Samantha. What started as a simple bet had evolved into a journey of self-discovery, a one that had me questioning my deepest sense of self. The more I reflected, the more I realized that my interest in cross-dressing was not just a passing fancy. It was a part of me that I could no longer ignore or hide. Yet, with this realization came a new set of challenges. How would I navigate this aspect of my life? What would it mean for my relationships, both personal and professional? The uncertainty was overwhelming. As I prepared for the date with Sarah, which had been rescheduled, I found myself at a crossroads. Should I continue to explore this side of myself openly, or should I retreat back to the safety of my familiar identity as Sam? The date itself was a bittersweet experience. Sarah was supportive and kind, but I could sense her confusion and curiosity. We talked and laughed, but underneath the surface, there was an unspoken tension. It was clear that my transformation into Samantha had changed the dynamics of our relationship, adding layers of complexity that were hard to navigate. At work, I maintained my usual demeanor as Sam, but the undercurrents of my recent explorations were ever-present. My colleagues' reactions to my transformation at the company event had settled into a mix of respectful curiosity and polite silence. It was clear that my actions had changed their perceptions of me, for better or worse. In private, I continued to explore the world as Samantha, each experience revealing new facets of myself. I found comfort in the routine of dressing up, the careful selection of outfits, and the meticulous application of makeup. It was during these moments that I felt a genuine connection to this other part of me, a side that was creative, expressive, and unburdened by societal expectations. The decision to integrate Samantha into my daily life came gradually. It started with small steps, wearing a piece of feminine clothing under my regular attire, or applying a subtle touch of makeup. These acts, hidden from the public eye, were my way of acknowledging this integral part of my identity. Encouraged by these small yet significant steps, I decided to take a bolder move. One weekend, dressed fully as Samantha, I ventured out to a local cafe. The initial fear of judgment and ridicule was overwhelming, but as I settled into the environment, those feelings were replaced by a sense of normalcy and acceptance. The patrons and staff treated me no differently than any other customer, a reaction that filled me with relief and a quiet sense of triumph. Buoyed by this positive experience, I began to incorporate Samantha into more aspects of my life. It was a slow process, fraught with anxiety and doubt, but each successful interaction bolstered my confidence. I started meeting with a small, understanding group of friends as Samantha, their support and acceptance providing a safe space for me to express myself freely. The most significant step came when I decided to go to work as Samantha. The night before, I lay awake, wrestling with the decision. It felt like standing on the edge of a precipice, unsure of what lay on the other side. But the desire to be true to myself, to live openly and honestly, outweighed my fears. The morning arrived, and with it a resolve I hadn't known I possessed. Dressed in a modest but elegant skirt and blouse, minimal makeup, and my hair styled neatly, I stepped into the office. The reactions were mixed, surprise, confusion, and in some cases, admiration. My boss, after the initial shock, offered a supportive nod, an unspoken gesture of acceptance. The day passed in a blur of work and quiet conversations. Some colleagues approached me with questions, their curiosity genuine and respectful. Others kept their distance, unsure how to react. 
But throughout it all, I felt a sense of alignment, an inner peace that came from the congruence of my inner and outer selves. Eventually, Samantha became a regular presence in the office. The novelty of my transformation gradually faded, giving way to a new normal. Colleagues adjusted, and soon, my choice of attire and appearance became just another part of the diverse tapestry of our workplace. As I left the office one evening, the setting sun cast a warm glow over the city. Walking down the street, the click of my heels a familiar sound, I felt a profound connection to the world around me, a part of something greater yet distinctly my own. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.